my favorite plant of this past year. Yay! Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rose and in today's video I'm gonna talk you through and also show you of course my top 10 of 2020. Might be 11. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> Let's start with matte. This is my Anthurium Metallicum and this is the biggest leaf that he got. It's such a velvet plant, I love it. And why I love this specifically this year is not only because I got it this year, but also because it's grown a lot and it's growing a new leaf right now, which I absolutely love. New Anthurium leaves are the best. They start off super, super small and then they grow, as they're hardening off, they just grow super big, which is my favorite which is also why I love Hoyas. This was the first leaf that came out for me. It's a little bit damaged, as you can see here. And then since then, it's grown so many more leaves and also so much bigger. This last one was the biggest one, of course. Little head test. He is so pretty. I'm gonna go through these quite quickly because we have 10 and I don't want this video to be another 50 minute video. So I'm gonna try and pop it back here and keep on going. Are we just gonna do all the anthuriums at once? We might, that might be a good idea. So, here we've got my other favorite anthurium of this year. This is my Regal, Reggie. I name most of my plants in case you're new. This one I've struggled with a lot, but since I figured it out, since I figured out how I should care for them and that I should not touch them at all because otherwise you get this. Nobody wants a crispy leaf like that. <laughs> But since then, it's grown this leaf, which is also much bigger and the veins are beautiful. I absolutely love this one. And I also got this this year together with the other Anthurium, which the unboxing video, if you want to see what this looked like when I got it, you can see that here. So these two are doing well. They are happy. I feel like 2020 was my year for Anthuriums. I only had a Claronervium before that and I really wanted to get into more, but I was afraid I could not care for them. And that was kind of a good fear <laughs> because I haven't been super successful with them, but they are now growing and doing well. So yay. Moving on to Alocasia. Over here, I've got two of my favorite Alocasia, actually three, if you count this beautiful Anthurium. Huh? Alocasia Zabrina variegata. This is like in the top mentions, but not in the actual list. I didn't even know I wanted this plant, but I got it for a giveaway and it has grown so much. I absolutely love how big these grow quite quickly. My boyfriend likes this also. Ooh, and my boyfriend also likes the Zabrina, so that's a good thing. That's why it gets to sit in this beautiful pot right in the living room. Thank you, boyfriend. The two that are in my top 10 are my Dragon Scale Alocasia, which you see here, and my Frydeck, which is actually a Mycolitiana Max something something. <laughs> because the fried egg version is the variegated version, but for easiness sake, I do keep calling it fried egg because otherwise no one knows what I'm talking about. Both of these are currently unfurling new leaves. This is the new fried egg leaf. And then here is the new dragon scale leaf. These are so fun to grow. I absolutely love these. Again, this has grown super big for me in quite a short amount of time, especially the fried egg. The dragon scale is a little bit slower, but the pattern is just amazing. And actually I was making my top nine of 2000, hmm, 2009. <laughs> I was making my top nine on Instagram and five out of the nine posts included the dragon skill. So it looks like people on Instagram really, really like this plant. My boyfriend need my help for a minute. Five minutes later. Okay, next let's look at some Hoya. I have three Hoya in this top 10. So these are not in order, by the way, and I should keep count. One, two, three, four. So this is number five. There might be more than 10 in this top 10. Hmm. <laughs> this is my Hoya Obovata, Oli. I put him in because I got him this year and he has grown so much. I even took some cuttings and I propagated them back into the pot to make it a little bit more full. And just generally, I love the shape of these amazing leaves. And also it gets a pink splash, which is kind of hard to see sometimes, but the top leaves that are close to the grow light get a pink splash, which I absolutely, absolutely love. It is 
a little bit more slow right now. I feel like it's going in growth spurts. So at one point it just grows super, super fast and then it takes a break and doesn't grow at all for a few weeks or even months. And then again, once it starts growing, it just goes super fast. So it's a bit weird, but I absolutely love Oli. He is one of my favorites for sure. The next Hoya on the list is Sandra. Here she is. This is my Hoya Fungi with beautiful, amazing, veiny, soft leaves. I recently showed you all of these in my Hoya video. If you haven't seen that yet, check it out here. All of my Hoyas are in there. I wanted to include this in my top 10 as well because it is so awesome. I got this with one leaf in June. So in half a year, it's grown all of these leaves and this huge tendril that's going around and up again. Just absolutely amazing and one of my favorites. I hope this continues growing very well for me. The last Hoya on this list is my Hoya Meredithi. This is such a big leaf. I absolutely love it. And I had no idea that it was gonna be this big. If we do a little face test, you can see just how big that is. And I had no idea if this was alive or not until a new leaf started to grow. And that is super exciting for me. I hope that this continues growing and actually starts to vine and grow up because so far we've got one leaf that is looking a little bit like a taco because I think it got a little bit too much light. So I'm hoping that this will be okay and it doesn't drop. I'm gonna keep this in my grow tent. I have it in my living room right now where it is 18 degrees, not so warm. In the grow tent, it's about 23 to 25 during the day. So that's much nicer. And I'm gonna move him back quite quickly. Okay, next. I lost count again already. Let's just go here. This is my philodendron melanochrysum, which I got as a tiny, tiny plant. And since then it's grown a lot of bigger leaves for me. I absolutely love this one and I really hope it can mature a little bit more so that it becomes a little bit like that huge one that they have in the botanic gardens in Utrecht, where I hope to make a video this coming year. I wanted to do that this year but unfortunately with all the restrictions, I wasn't able to. I love this so much because the leaves come out this beautiful bronzy color, almost even pinkish yellow in the beginning. And then they slowly turn to dark green and the velvet and the little veins, absolutely one of my favorites. The other philodendron in this list is of course, Caspar, my philodendron Florida ghost. This is the top cutting of Caspar. As you can see, this leaf was the original leaf and it is really, really big. The other ones are a little bit smaller, but they are in fact turning green. And if you've seen my ghost video, you know that that is very special for me. I'm very happy that it is turning green. Even this leaf that I suspected was not gonna do anything because it was so white is now looking like it might turn green as well. And then these ones, you can definitely see the nice green coming in. The newest leaf as well, it's still very creamy but then it's turning green. That is the best news ever for any <laughs> Florida ghost parent whose Florida ghost has been melting all summer because it was too warm and too much light and they didn't realize it like mine. So I'm super, super, ha super, super, super happy <laughs> that this is finally returning back to normal. And out of this whole adventure, I did get a lot of propagation. So I have a lot of mini ghosts growing in my tent right now which I'm super excited about for spring to see how they grow. Maybe pot a few together to create a more full pot. In the end, it was a good thing. The last plant in this official top 10, there is gonna be a bonus one, is my Monstera variegata, Ferry, who is too big to even put in the whole frame. I got this, I think in 2019, but it has grown so much for me this year and it just looks so beautiful with the variegation. It's got big splashes of white, which I love, and the leaves are becoming much more mature. Absolutely love this plant, and it definitely needs to be in my top 10. Hi, Maggie. You wanna come say hi? Maggie is a little bit shy. No, come back. Maggie. Okay, she's too shy. The one plant that I did wanna mention in this video because not so much it's one that I think is super beautiful, but it is one that is quite special to own as a normal person, <laughs> plant grower. And that is my Monstera obliqua. 
This is Lika, my Monstera Obliqua that I got from a friend. And if you're a little bit into aeroids, you know that this is not just a plant that you get as a gift from a friend. They are usually sold for quite a lot of money and they are very hyped, especially the Peru form. This one is obviously not the Peru form because there's no holes in this one. This is the Bolivian form, but it is still really cool to own and I'm interested to see how this does in my care. It has grown these two leaves in my tent and the second one is looking a lot happier since I am not blasting it with too much light anymore like I was before. So I'm just very curious to see how this grows and experiment with it. And I'm super grateful to my friend for gifting it to me in that video. If you haven't seen it yet, I receive it in this video. It's the Hoorthia video. Rogier is the manager of the Botanic Gardens in Leiden and he gave this to me. So thank you so much Rogier. Honorable mention in the top 10. Just a quick update on explaining why Vicky is not on this list this year is because she's been having a lot of issues. She had a lot of spider mites, so the leaves look very sad and I propagated her, so the stem looks very bare now. And I think she might be back in my list next year. But yeah, this year she's been a bit of a troublemaker. And that's it for my top 10 for 2020. I would love to hear what is your top 10 of this past year or just your top one or two is fine too if you don't want to type it all out. <laughs> I do read all of the comments and I really appreciate all of your comments and your support. So thank you so much for that. A big thank you to all of my patrons and YouTube members. I love you guys so much. I'm super grateful that you're supporting me. And if you're also interested in doing that, you can either click the button below to become a YouTube member or go to patreon.com slash plantwithrose and there you can become a member for as little as two euro fifty I think per month or maybe three I forgot and for the five euro membership we do a monthly zoom call where we just get together you can ask your questions and we hang out and share our plants with each other so it's been really fun so far we've done two already so I can't wait to get more people in those calls in the new year have a wonderful change of year I hope you have some fun traditions for that even in this very different year. If you want to try out one of my traditions, I love to make vision boards every year. You can check out the video of how to do that here. I made that last year and I will definitely be doing it again this year. So maybe you can join me on that. I have a few more videos coming up before the change of year, so I'm not going to officially say Happy New Year yet, but please give this video a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye everyone! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten.